And thank you, Dave. It's currently 73 degrees under cloudy skies. The winds are out of the northeast at four miles an hour. I'm glad to have sitting across from me today, Marty's here from the Lakeside Pottery Studio. Good morning, Marty. How are you? Good morning. Um, and I want to thank you for joining us today. And you, uh, were, we were talking off air a little bit. You're, you've been in this business. Uh, for quite a while now, since uh, 2001. Yes, I have. Yes. And uh, Lakeside Pottery Studio uh, is a nationally recognized ceramic and uh, sculpture restoration studio. Tell us a little bit about what you do there. Uh, with the restoration part of the business, uh, we uh, focus mostly on three-dimensional art, where it means sculpture, pottery. It could be brand new item or it could be 3,000 years old. Uh, we work with museums, collectors and individuals. Uh, most items get shipped to us after we give them an estimate and packing and shipping instructions. It arrives to our studio and um, typically 8 to 12 weeks later it's restored to its original state. It can arrive uh, with a scratch or can be broken to 40-50 pieces. So, so we address wide range of uh, situations. So what has one of the oldest pieces been that's been uh, brought to you for uh, restoration? Uh, there were several. There were uh, Israelites, um, vases and forests. Uh, we got a statue from Italy. It was a marble statue uh, that was uh, claimed to be a couple of thousand years old. Um, we get um, Early American items, uh, co collectible, obviously, they are a few hundred years old, um, and, and many more. The list is long. So what brought you to uh, do this type of business? I mean, this is, I'm going to say, a very rare business. There can't be too many uh, reputable restoration pottery places around. It, it's an evolution of events. Uh, I was in corporate for many years prior to that, an engineer, and then moved into the administrative part of engineering kind of product lines. Um, realized that I made a mistake moving to the administrative uh, part, director, VP, etc., and uh, was seeking more creative job. Couldn't go back to engineering. I was um, outdated being in a um, non engineering role for a while. So I started pottery and realized that's my path and um, opened an art school, Lakeside Pottery Ceramic School and Studio in Stamford, Connecticut. We've been operating for 14 years uh, and it was mostly sculpting and pottery, mostly adults. And uh, people assume that if you do pottery, you also can do restoration of pottery, which was a wrong assumption, but it made me realize that there is a need for that. Being an engineer for many years, began to understand the limitations of restoration and um, began to spend some time um, and took some projects in and to my surprise and other surprise uh, it looked pretty good and uh, decided to make a go at it and we started doing restoration and the name got out there and it moved nationally and then globally and uh, we now have a different problem which is how to say no that there is greater demand than what our capability, especially since we moved to Lewis, we used to have staff, now it's only Patty, my wife and I. Uh, so we're a little bit selective, uh, we're trying to do things that are more interesting. Mm -hmm. that, that's it's amazing uh, that uh, here this was just a passion, pottery, and now it's turned into a very uh, unusual, I'll say business yet, a, a, a business that uh, there probably is not much competition for. There is competition. Uh, you know, there are very good people out there, but uh, what, what happened is that, um, you know, because we have so many lessons and tutorial on our, on our, our website, as we taught pottery and ceramic and sculpting, uh, we decided to share everything we know, and there are hundreds of lessons which made the website popular and it helped with search engine optimizations. So, so by gravity, it helps our business. If you search for something, we come up because Google realized that this site has value, not really intended to promote the restoration, but it happened to be that it does. So we come up first in searches. And it's very easy for someone to go to your website, lakesidepottery.com, and to get an estimate, uh, to get a, an idea of uh, what can be done if they do have something that needs repair. Co correct. Uh, 
there are two parts to the restoration website. One of them, there are lessons. If people want to do it themselves, uh, we teach them. There are at least 23 lessons for 23 or 4 different scenarios of restoration. But what happened to most people, they go to the site, they realize soon after they began to read the, um, the lessons that it's a little bit more complicated than they assume and they're already on the site and they decide to submit an estimate. Mm -hmm. So uh, helping others seems to help us as well. That's great. And uh, by moving here and, and limiting your staff to yourself and your wife, uh, do you believe that's taken a little stress away from you or is it added a little bit? No, it, 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 we love it here. It's, it's so wonderful. We, we try to balance and uh, we, like in particular during the summer, we, we first focus on what we should do for ourselves and we do the work uh, in non-prime time, meaning evenings and early mornings. Mm -hmm. So it gives us the flexibility to join nature in our gardens and friends. That's great. And looking at your website, again, lakesidepottery.com, some of the before and after pictures are just incredible. Uh, here someone sends you uh, a, a vase, uh, an antique porcelain vase with, it looks like maybe 15, 20, at least 20 pieces here. And uh, how you restore it, uh, I have no idea, but it's just amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people will, you know, buy something at an art show or an art fair and if they drop it, oh no, it goes in the trash. But uh, with the help of your lessons or by talking uh, and, and getting an estimate from you online, they could have this repaired and, and these look like uh, they've never been broken. Thank you, yeah. And, uh, you know, part of it is, is, is the joy of doing it. And also meeting very interesting people, not not in person necessarily, but by phone. You know, every broken item has a story, and um, so so they call sometimes after they sent it, and they said, "Do you want to hear the story?" And sometimes I don't, but we always say yes, and it tends to be an interesting story in most of them. So what people will do if they if you decide that you would like to repair it. They'll package it up, they'll send it to you, and then uh, it goes into, I guess, a queue of uh, items that are waiting to be repaired. Yeah, we typically have between 60 to 70 items in, in the queue, so the lead time right now it's 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, typically, it ends up to be less than that, but we just don't know what's going to show up, so we have a little buffer, that's why it's 10 to 12 and not 10 just in case we get bombarded mm -hmm. for a period of time. And are you finding that you're getting uh, quite a bit of, uh, say, artifacts or museum pieces or museums contacting you, that uh, things are actually breaking that are on display or they're donated to them and they want to get them repaired? Most of the works is collectors, auction houses, uh, museums, uh, the, the, the big ones have their own restoration department. and. Um, we, we began to affiliate with each other, share knowledge. Uh, the museum usually use older technology. They're afraid to use something new. Uh, they prefer to use known technology. And so if something's supposed to last for 100 years, they want to be living 100 years to see if it's true. And, and, and I sort of, in, in engineering mind, um, you know, we do a lot of accelerated life tests. We can project what it's going to be. So museums are afraid of projection, so they stay with all the technology and we began to share what we learned with them, perhaps for them to move a little bit more um, the newer technology, which is so much better than what been used in the 60s. So uh, you're using computers today to, uh, to work with this, or is this all done by sight and uh, glue, let's say? Uh, we, we use uh, instrumentations that are a little bit more sophisticated. We use materials that, that uh, can handle more complicated things and projection of how things should come together and at the end end up in the place that where, they sh where they should be. Um, we work with companies like uh, PC Epoxy and Loctite. They love to be affiliated with us because they like to show the customer the before and after. So they give us access to their engineering groups so we learned something from them. Um, uh, there is more to it, you know, the painting, sure. for example, is, is, is the one that takes the most skill, uh, how to make painting continuously, even though you're painting only a subset of an item. Uh, so, um, 
Patty helps a lot with that. She's an amazing painter. Mm -hmm. So she does the most complex painting uh, and I'm catching up with her ability. But um, she is the main source for things that, um, like for, for example, we did a project that was uh, the, the last plate of the Russian Tsar. And it was pretty complicated painting uh, by any standards. I was afraid to touch it, but when she did it, uh, it came out amazing. Nice. So, do you uh, are you ever perplexed, let's say, by what the pieces in this puzzle are to become, or do most people send you, let's say, a photo of what it used to look like before it was broken? We we learned pretty quickly there is no need to look what it used to look like because every piece can go only in one place. Uh, there are no two places where it can go, the, the brick pattern, the colors, the texture, uh, and eventually it, 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 it is a puzzle, but it sort of began to become intuitive. You sort of know where this piece should go by all these variables. So it's just, I, I, the way that I speak about it is that uh, when, when you, learn, you learn how to walk, you, you, know, you have to learn to bend the knee and lift up your leg, and eventually you don't think about the walking, and it began to be like that. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming in today. I want to remind people they can go to your website, uh, lakesidepottery.com, if they have a broken piece of, of pottery and uh, maybe take one of your lessons online and fix it themselves. Well, thank you. Pleasure speaking with you. Great. Thank you again. Uh, Lakeside Pottery here in uh, Sussex County, and they are doing work from around the world of nationally uh, recognized ceramic sculpture restoration studio established back in 2001. And I want to thank Marty. Sorry, Patty couldn't make it this morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> and no problem at all. Lakesidepottery.com. It's 8.47, a couple minutes behind and checking in with Rick Dixon. Let's get a look at our local traffic right here on 99.1 Radio Rehoboth. We are community radio for Rehoboth Beach, Lewis, and Dewey Beach. We'll be right back.